We just witnessed why this Toronto Raptors core is so terrifying to the NBA. Yes, it's young. Yes, it's developing. But with guys like RJ Barrett with outstanding performances like he had tonight, Jakob Pertl continuing his dominant play out there at the center position. This team came out and got a big win over a really solid team in the Indiana Pacers tonight and showed the vision, showed what this team can look like in the future. Because again, yes, we're playing with a ton of injuries right now. Yes, this team is super young. It was the worst record in the NBA coming into this game now the Philadelphia 76ers are which is a crazy thing to say but basically this Toronto Raptors team things are coming together all in the right ways are we going to win a ton of games this season probably not at least the first few weeks of the season is any indication of what's going to happen going forward but to have games like this and most of these games of the course of the season have been really good have been really positive just with sort of stretches where the team ends up falling apart and ends up getting messy but this has been an extremely competitive team this entire year and there are a ton of things to get excited about with this current core group and what we're able to build from it so we're going to break down what happened in this game against the Pacers the emergence of RJ Barrett and other young stars in this team and give some love to out here to Jakob Pertl but before we dive into that folks again you guys have been crushing it hitting the like button on these videos as of late so make sure if you're feeling good about this toronto raptors team you're feeling good after a big win against the indiana pacers you guys hit that like button because frankly winning feels good and i know people are saying hey why, why are we trying to win we're trying to capture a flag we are the bottom seed and you know i i think this is a the most reasonable season for the tanking fans than there has been in recent years for the toronto raptors so i'm not bashing anyone with that sort of frame of mind coming into the season but it is a long year this team is too good to lose all these games the games are too close for that stuff to just be happening night in night out and it's good for development it's good for morale it's great to have these types of games to really have going forward and again i'm still rooting for the toronto raptors every single time they go out i want this team to get some w's see if we can turn the season around again i'm not stressing if we do lose but again we have to enjoy these wins come at it and be excited because frankly you know we gotta appreciate what rj barrett is doing for this team right now because tonight 39 points nine assists or nine rebounds five assists for this raptors team and you know really efficient shooting 13 and 21 from the field four of eight from the three-point line knocking down his free throws and frankly like rj barrett is the offense right like is the centerpiece is the focal point is the main guy that all these teams are really locked in on. And we've said the same thing, you know, about Pascal Siakam in seasons past, who, you know, is now on the Indiana Pacers, of course, and had a solid game himself tonight. But basically, when teams lock in on your top guy, it's an adjustment period. It's kind of something you have to get used to. And over the road trip, there were a couple down games for RJ Barrett, but really he has bounced back and shown why he has really taken that leap and why so many fans are excited about what he's been able to do in regards to development over the course of the season. And you know, the guy's only like 24 years old. He's putting up some ridiculous stats night in, night out. Again, the numbers were a little bit low for a stretch there, but he's finishing around the basket. He's always been able to do that. You know, his three-point shot is looking more confident over the course of the season. Again, there's been a couple games where it's just a, a big sort of, uh, you know, it's just a really cold night, and that's messed up his percentages over the course of the year. But I don't know. RJ Barrett's just confidence. And tonight, this is where you see. You can visually see the development in these games because RJ Barrett had a ton of opportunities earlier on this year to close out some games, to have some game winning shots, to have those really clutch buckets. And he's getting to those spots, but maybe you could argue they weren't bad shots, but he'd be rushing it a little bit. He'd be taking his, uh, you know, sometimes as the young stars do, right? They try to get to their spots, try to get that heroic play and their minds going at a hundred miles per hour. And tonight in the clutch, cause again, the, the Raptors handled this game from start to finish. But down the stretch, you got guys like Benning Mathurin coming out there and just really, you know, trying to make a push for the Indiana Pacers. The Indiana Pacers are a very good team and had a, like, a solid enough game here tonight. Obviously not crazy of performances, but Mathurin, Siakam, Tyrus Halliburton's just been off as of late. Dave, Davion Mitchell really got into him. Obi Toppin, who obviously used to play with uh, RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly. You know, he had a pretty solid game in this one, but basically... This Raptors team came out down the stretch and executed. It was a big reason was RJ Barrett's just real poise down the stretch, you know, getting those uh, shots, whether it be middies, whether it be floaters around the basket, whether it be knocking down three-point shots, making good decisions, making great passes to guys like Jakob Pertl. He just had a gorgeous, absolute beauty spin pass to a Jakob Pertl kind of no-look kind of vibe. And their connection has been something that's phenomenal. We'll talk about Jakob Pertl after. But again, the, the development, not just in the scoring, because I think RJ Barrett's always had 
had elite scoring upside. That's not shocking to a ton of people, but the assists and tonight, you know, again, there are more opportunities for him to score. So the assists are going to be down a bit, but still have five assists and it's making good passes. Just is really a good connector. You know, look coming into this game is averaging roughly six assists per game, which is a massive, massive leap up in terms of what he's been able to do. So shout out to RJ Barrett, phenomenal performance for him tonight, but this can't be taken away. We can't be taking anything away from Jakob Pertl because, again, I'm getting trashed on sometimes for supporting Jakob Pertl, thinking he's a good basketball player, but he just continues night in, night out to look like an elite center out there in the NBA. It's just kind of the reality. You know, people don't like throwing out around the word star, depending on how you define the line. Like, Jakob Pertl's playing like a top 10 center out there in the NBA. There's no argument really against that, especially over the past couple of weeks. I mean, he is coming out there playing elite defense. His touch around the rim has just been on another level. His efficiency, you see it tonight, 13 of 18 shooting. Had a few turnovers, so he's trying to make some assists and stuff like that. But 30 points, 16 rebounds, two steals, two blocks, two assists. You can't argue against that. You just can't go out there, oh, yeah, Capurdle's trash, he's garbage, whatever. Like, again, you can make the argument, hey, the Raptors should trade him because, again, the team is trying to capture a flag, right? We're trying to get that uh, top pick. F fair enough, whatever argument. But you can't say to me, that this guy, Jakob Pertl, is just some garbage big man. He's not a starter. He's not this. He's not that. He has been phenomenal for the Toronto Raptors and is the anchor for this team. Uh, it keeps us competitive. And so he has been awesome out there over the course of the season. But, you know, those are the top two guys that the Toronto Raptors. They're going to get all the headlines. But Ochai Baji just continues to play phenomenal defense. Had a bunch of facilitators. Like, was a good facilitator tonight. But, uh, you know, 11 points, 4 rebounds, 6 assists, 1 steal, 3 blocks. Just overall, Philip Sachi dealt with some foul trouble, him and Grady Dick. But, again, out there on the wings, like, everyone talks about the Pascal Siakam trade being garbage. And I'd still lean that, like, hey, the Raptors should have got more for Pascal Siakam or just re-signed him. But I get the direction. I get where they were going. But one sneaky... I don't know what to call it because it wasn't a part of the Pascal Siakam trade. But when the Raptors traded for Pascal Siakam, they got three first-round picks, Bruce Brown and Jordan Wara. War is gone. We drafted Jacoby Walter, but one of those picks was like a late round pick in the first round of this year. And we traded that to the Utah Jazz to acquire Kelly Olynyk, who again has been injured a ton this season. Don't not a huge gauge in his value right now, but also Ochai Abaji. And frankly, Ochai Abaji, and we'll see how Jacoby Walter is. He's been too injured to really get a good grasp on him as a player, but has showed some encouraging signs. But Ochai Abaji is looking like a really nice piece, probably the best piece so far in regards to that Toronto Raptors return, uh, return for Pascal Siakam. So again, I'm very, very excited with what we were able to see from an Ochai Abaji out there on this uh, Raptor squad. And, you know, again, doesn't do anything too, too crazy, but it's just a really solid defender, score around the paint, three-point shooter in 22 or three from the three-point line tonight. Phenomenal stuff there. Nothing too crazy from Grady Dick in this one. Again, a little bit of foul trouble. Had some turnovers, but 15 points, four rebounds, three assists. Again, just a, a solid Grady Dick game. Nothing crazy off, uh, you know, popping off the stat sheet. David Mitchell, highest plus minus for this team. He has some pretty confident takes out there, but 11 points, four assists. Good stuff for Davion. But off the bench, everyone was pretty steady, right? Nothing too phenomenal, nothing too great. But the guy that's, again, the most exciting there off the bench was definitely Garrett Temple because, again, 11 minutes for Temple, especially in the first half, like three points, three rebounds, three assists, two steals, one block. And the momentum that he brought this team out there in the first half was carried over out there into the, you know, the runs of this Toronto Raptors team ended up making. So again, not pit, putting the win on Temple here, but definitely uh, the best guy off the bench of the team, even though he had scored the least points out of everyone. You know, it's nice to see the vet. We're all talking about development. We're all talking about the future of this team, but Garrett Temple... Still an NBA guy, still a fun guy to, to watch, knock down a three-point shot, have an impact out there on this game. So he was good. And Jameson Battle knocked down some threes, which is solid. You know, Chris Boucher, not the greatest night. He's had some phenomenal games and then just some kind of, you know, I don't want to call them stinkers, but just non-impactful games. And that's kind of the story of the season for Boucher. But Jonathan Mobo, Shed, both of those guys feel like they've hit a little bit of a rookie wall, which makes sense. Again, second round picks, you know, Finding their footing after a really hot start, which I, I'm okay with. I mean, I, I'm a shedhead, so that's just the reality. You know, I'm going to be a fan of this guy. I'm not losing, selling any stock out there at the, in the Jamal Shed kind of bandwagon. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this Raptors team. Definitely a very, very exciting young core for this Toronto Raptors squad. And frankly, I'm excited for the future. Will we win every game now going forward? I hope so, but 
reality is we're the, we were the last place team coming into this season. It is what it is. And I'm not too stressed about having the worst record in the NBA to close off this year. The lottery odds are pretty flat out there at the bottom. So the Raptors have a good chance regardless of where they're at. We're going to be too good to win some games, especially when Emmanuel quickly and Scotty Barnes return. So that's kind of the reality of everything. I'm still feeling good about how this, you know, the direction of this team, things are going and very, very happy with this win. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. You guys are the best thing this far. Subscribe to the channel. Anyways, I'm signing out. Cheers.